I'd like to call the meeting to order. This meeting is being recorded. I would ask if there's anyone else recording this meeting. Seeing none, if you'd please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you could please remain standing for a wonderful rendition of our national anthem from the Acre Rockets. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled Okay, we now welcome everyone. We now move on to the community service learning presentations. Dr. Brunel? I don't think that's. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as I know that we all feel this way, this is one of our favorite evenings for school committee to hear from our students about some of the many great things that they do to give back to the Auburn community. We're tremendously thankful for the generosity of our community, and we like to show that by giving back. So, Without further ado, with your permission, I'll turn it over to Dr. Lopez and the team from Swanson Road who will start us off. I have some wonderful students here tonight. Uh, a few things about community service learning projects. I think as a district and as a school community, we do a lot of community service and we're so, or you are so generous in everything that we do. We try to carry that over in all of our schools. But the difference between the community service and the community service learning is quite different and it really ties a lot of the curriculum to that real impact to our community. So we have two that we're going to present today, and I'm going to turn it over to Miss Sarah Cannell, who will introduce the girls in the first, or one of the first projects that we'll present this evening. Yes, we have three things that we really focus on when it comes to community service learning at Swiss, and the first is student inquiry. So these students have come up with all the questions that we ask that drive our research, a second thing is academic integrity, so I have to take their innovative ideas and work them into the curriculum. So figure out a way to enhance the common core curriculum with their brilliant questions. And the third thing is locating community partners who will be willing to help us. So they're going to tell you about a couple of our community partners that have helped us along the way. Mr. Corbell Arboretum by Haley Swenson, Mary McLaughlin, and Taylor Cox. Mr. Corbell's class. Mr. Corbell had a classroom and right outside was a big pit of dirt. He really wanted his class to get involved in planting some trees because he taught science. So on Earth Day, he took them outside and they had them plant 25 trees. That is the start, but not the end of our arboretum. A few of the trees 
A few of the trees that we found out are the Norway maple, the crab apple, the Bruce spruce, and many more. But sadly, some of them are missing. We call these the phantom trees. The Arboretum app. We created an app to help us, help us practice tracing leaves and branches to learn more about recognizing the species of the trees in the Arboretum at a school. Math Digi visited us to help us with our app. We helped them with their app too. We also, can, we also entered the Congressional App Challenge. Sadly, we did not win, but we were the youngest participants. <laughs> the motor engine. There is a motor buried in the grounds of the Arboretum. Mr. Cornwell's dream was that we would make cars that wouldn't have a motor running to pollute the earth. That type of thinking forward was a big part of his legacy. <laughs> we are still looking for the engine. <laughs> his death. He died in a scuba diving accident during a science expedition in 1979. He died doing what he loved, dedicating himself to science. Without him, the, Aubrey, the Arboretum became a difficult to take care of. Beautifying Auburn in 2017. Today, we are bringing back the Ar we are bringing the Arboretum back to life. Morgan Blair, an artist, painted an Arboretum mural on the side of our school. Our club Maple Leaf activated the Arboretum. <coughs> Matt, um. Auburn News came to this big event that we put on, um, and they asked us some questions and took some pictures, um, and we ended up in the Daily News the next day. Um, the reason they came was because we, we made this event to honor Mr. Corville, and it was just a great feeling for someone to honor that we did this work. More than 200 families came to the Earth Day celebration! <laughs> going to speak a little bit about uh, the purpose. Swanson Road had the 11th annual turkey trot in November. This year, the students raised $4,000. All the money raised was once again donated to Pride and Purpose, a charity supporting disadvantaged communities in South Africa. Pride and Purpose supports the children by building and stocking schools from the preschool level through high school. They also provide supplies such as medicine, mosquito netting, and personal water filters. These basic items are the difference between life and death in this region of South Africa. Swanson Bear students work very hard to raise this money for Brian Purpose by running laps in the gym during PE class. Over the years, the students' efforts have raised over $23,000 for Brian Purpose. They have dramatically improved the lives of children half a world away and have learned with little hard work and determination they can change the world by just giving a little bit of So thank you all for coming tonight. Um, as Dr. Lopez says, uh, you know, community service learning really is an embedded practice in the Auburn Public Schools, and I think that's what's another one of the things that makes Auburn remarkable. Um, and so I'm going to let these folks talk about uh, a few of the initiatives at Bryn Mawr School, uh, but it does make us proud every day when we talk to kids about making connections to themselves through their learning. This helps them to connect to their community as well, so it's a great thing. So I'm going to turn it over to Mrs. Spinuccio and her lovely cast of characters. <laughs> All right, good evening. So I'm Mrs. Spinuccio, and I'm the reading specialist at Bryn Mawr School. I'm excited to have these second graders here tonight to tell you about our school service learning project and reading incentive, which we call Sharing the Love of Reading. So with us tonight, we have Audrey Johnson, Elias Peshera, Piper Dome, Fiona Eaton, Lucy Zaleski, Kendall Johnson, Reese Dickey, and Elena Barbosa. Now I'm going to turn it over to them so you can hear about our exciting reading, ex reading inspired, ex 
experience. In February, our second grade classes read a story called Vivid Obra in our new reading. It was a true story about a man named Liz from Columbia. He loved reading. He had a house full of books. He decided to share his books with children. He brought two, he brought two burrows and, and named them Alpha and Beta. He then traveled to four villages in Colombia to bring his love of reading and books to them. We enjoyed reading the story very much. One of our classmates even went home, filled a wagon with books, and went around their neighborhood to share books. However, we were also kind of sad when we realized some kids don't have many books to read, even kids right here in America. Our teachers said that there was a way that we could help. Together, we decided to collect books to for, for kids that didn't have them. Once we figured out what we wanted to do, we thought the whole school could help us. To tell the other students in the school about this project, we visited the kindergarten and first grade classrooms. First, we read the Biblioboro story to them, and then we explained our project. We asked everyone to bring in, in, in a gently loved book to donate. We wanted students to bring in a book they enjoyed, that a kid their age would enjoy reading. In addition to our service learning project, we also had a school-wide reading incentive program. Ms. Venuti challenged us to read a little bit more every night, and we kept track of it from a special reading list. Each week, the minutes were added to, up to get a total for our classrooms. Each of our classrooms had a little bird that was placed on a building board with the seven contents. For every 1,200 minutes our classroom read, our roles traveled around the world. When we reached a new continent, we were given a handout with information and learned about unique li a unique library. We learned that it's not just burrows that bring books to people. We learned that elephants, camels, horses, buses, and motorcycles and boats all also serve as traveling libraries. Over five weeks, the students at Bryn Mawr School read over 123,000 minutes. Our brains really grew. <laughs> the generous students at our school donated 500 bucks to get to the children in need. Many of our students also donated one dollar to purchase bags to put in to put the books in. On the day we stuffed the bags, a few students from each classroom went to the cafeteria and helped fill each bag with books. We wanted to make sure there were books for the babies too. Some too, so some of the money was used to buy more books for the baby. We know it's important to start reading to kids early. We know that there are children all over the world that need books, but we wanted our donations to stay close to our local community. Some of the bags of books were brought to Auburn Youth and Family Services. Some of the bags were brought to places called Project Just Because and Hawkington that they help families and me all over Massachusetts. We hope the children will enjoy having books on their own. To read and now they have a safe place to keep and carry them to. The, stu 
the students of Bryn Mawr love reading, and we just have to share that love. It's amazing what reading can do, and this project really proved that. All this came from just reading a story in our books. We were curious. We were inspired. We helped other kids. And we learned about some really cool libraries in different places around the world. Marcos and Eva. Mrs. Cherie is representing first grade with Kaylee Doyle, and Mrs. Katar is representing second grade with Nicholas Di Roberto. They're going to discuss the grade level specific community learning, learning service projects that they were in charge of, and some of the things that we did as a school school wide this year that connected with our math, our reading, science, and social studies standards were that they duct tape the principal to the wall for Stick It to Cancer. They loved that, and there were over 800 pieces of duct tape on Mrs. Stanwyck. <laughs> it was quite something. We had health education through the American Red Cross, and I am proud to announce that we saved over 60 lives this year with the amount of blood that was donated through our drive. Our second graders partnered with the residents at Eddie Pond and became pen pals with them this year as well, and we invited them to some of our events at school. So I am going to let our students share our community service learning projects. All right, Siva. Oh. My name is Eva Kramsky, and my name is Luke <coughs> Kindergarten Class. For our community service learning object, we learned about recycling and why it's important for our earth. We held a can and a bottle of water the same day as the county came up. We asked all of the Hackatog families to donate their redeemable cans and bottles so that we could turn them in for the second We were so excited and thankful because many families took part in our drive. We, we, our teacher had loads of cans and bottles to redeem. We plan to use the money from the drive to buy new recess equipment for all of the students at Hypertrop to, en to enjoy. My name is Marcos Panamos and I'm in Mrs. Walsh's kindergarten class too. We were able to raise over $100 with all of the donations from our can and bottle drive. We then surveyed all of the classes 
Patrick on to see what they would like for us to purchase for our school. Each of the classes voted on the following chalk and bubbles, jump ropes, jump ropes, and hula hoops for sports equipment. Most of the kids at Pack and Chalk voted for sports equipment. So that's what our kindergarten teachers will be purchasing for our school. It's great that we were able to recycle the cans and bottles, which is great for our planet. It's also great that we were able to raise some money for equipment that all of the students can enjoy at recess. Good evening. My name is Kaylee Doyle and I am a first grader at Packetrop School. This year for our community service learning, the first graders did a project that we called Adopt the Cops. Students were given the opportunity to earn money by doing a variety of chores around their homes. We completed earning reports and counted the money during a math lesson. We raised about $400 to purchase gift cards and treats for the Auburn Police Department. We also made a giant bowl of ice cream with sprinkles of thanks. The Auburn Police work so hard every day to keep our community safe and <coughs> to show them how much we appreciate them. Good evening. My name is Dorian Guitar and I am a second grade teacher at Packachog School. This is always a favorite time of year as all the schools come together to share with the larger community the projects we have participated in and how we are helping those in need. I have brought along with me one of my second grade students, Nicholas Roberto Jr. The junior is very important. And he is going to tell you about the second grade community service learning project. Hi, my name is Nicholas Roberto, and the second grade at Packet Chalk School ran a school-wide Hats off for Cancer Fundraiser. The Lumberg we collected brand new hats for the young cancer patients at Dana Farber Pediatric Oncology Department. We thought this would be a great cause to help because we know some children lose their hair while being treated for cancer, and we wanted them to have enough hats to keep their heads warm during the colder months. In the end, we collected over 130 hats and raised about $600. We received a nice thank you from the hospital, and it made us all feel good to help other kids just like us. Good evening. It's my pleasure to introduce the president of the Auburn Middle School Student Council. This is going to be a student center presentation. This is Rachel Gervais. Rachel has come up with some innovative ideas this year. And one thing I really like about Rachel, the student council president, she comes up with some great ideas. She'll meet with herself and her advisor and their troops. And then she'll come to me and talk to me about it. And she has a great follow through. She's had some really inspirational ideas this year. So, without further, Rachel Gervais. Okay, so first I'm just going to start off by introducing um, some of the advisors. So, the two in National Junior Honor Society advisors are Mrs. Watson and Mrs. Dupuy. And the student council advisor is Mrs. Bailey. So, thank you to them. service projects and has done. Um, the Rockathon being one of them, Abby Westerman, a former student of Auburn Middle School, 
wanted to do a rock account for Stonehall College to raise money for Make-A-Wish. Um, she reached out to Mr. Bradman and was wondering if we still made our rocking chairs in tech engineering. He explained that we don't make those anymore, but we would still love to be part of the fundraiser with them. Um, Mr. Bradman made, made the decision to collaborate with Stonehill College with NJ Justin Stuka members leading the charge. Advisors of NJ Justin Stuka donated eggs and candy for the grants to be sold during lunches at all grades. And several teachers gener generously gave toward the cause by purchasing egg rooms for their students. And Mr. Gagnon and one other teacher even purchased a rocking chair for the rock. Okay, so I'm going to be talking about the egg rooms we sold. So within, a just, within just a few weeks to put this together, the two clubs created egg rooms. Students bought egg rooms for each other, sending positive messages to classmates while raising money for a great cause. Members of Stonehill College came to speak with our students during lunches, explaining where the proceeds were going, who at the school was involved, and what the goal was. Hi, I'm Emily Dupuy. This was the flyer that was posted around the school as the egg rooms were being sold. They were available April 3rd to the 14th in the cafeteria during all of the grades' lunch times. They were $1 each, which included the plastic egg and the candy inside. And with the money raised, the rocking chairs were purchased for a rockathon taking place at Stonehill College, in which we attended. As you can see in the picture, we put the eggs inside of the teachers' mailboxes. This is a process that we used to deliver the eggs to the students, and in two weeks, we raised over $800. So, um, so Stuka was as members who were actively involved in selling and distributing the egg grants were invited to Stonehill College to take part in the rock on Friday, April 28th. Stonehill students worked with Mr. Carlson to live stream the rock upon into our cafe during the lunch. So on the left, this is us leaving AMS on the district's bus and Ms. Prudy who drove us to Stonehill. And then on the right, we were this is us eating ice cream after we participated in the Um, the two organizations that really made this possible was National Junior Honor Society. Their members split the eggs, created a schedule to man the table, and made sure the eggs were constantly on hand and being sold. Um, student council members split the eggs, were vocal in the sales to every student in our middle school, and gave up their lunch to sell and distribute the eggs. And last, and certainly not least, Stonehill College. Their athletic department led the charge working with the Make-A-Wish Foundation, and they are working to help um, make a person's wish come true. <coughs> Through this community outreach, Emma has played an active role in helping Stonehill raise over $6,000, and Stonehill raised the most money in their conference, therefore they get to reveal a wish to a student at Stonehill in the fall, and they were invited to participate. This is a group photo in front of the Stonehill Athletic Building. And now a video of the event. Stonehill College sent us a video that they put out on their website, which I get up from YouTube. As they revealed what's going to happen in the fall, we're going to be going back with the representatives. We're going to be at the high school and grab them and go up to Stonehill for the Make a Wish reveal. And when I was in middle school, I had to take a board tech class and still had a board tech class. So 
and this afternoon when we started talking about the idea of doing a rockathon and the idea of coming together on that rock and trees, I reached out to my middle school to see if they still have the wood tech class, which they no longer do, but it turned out that the principal had two um, kids that went to Stonehill and he's super involved with English, so it just turned into a collaboration and they helped us raise money to be able to pay for rock and trees. The kids at Auburn Middle School stole egg grants, so they split like candy and plastic eggs and had to send them to their friends to help raise money. This event is crazy. I mean, we've raised a lot of money and we're still going. Um, we do things like into the bleachers. Um, so every home game, we go into the bleachers and we just simply have money for Maple Wish. And we also have other little things around campus. So we have this thing called Aces Photo where our mascot Ace dressed up in a sand suit and walk around campus and took selfies with people and he was taking donations. But compared to those two things, I mean, this, for our first ever event this big, I mean, I couldn't ask for a better turnout, and our staff couldn't ask for a better turnout, and just, we can't thank the Southern community enough for everything they've done today. I mean, it's incredible. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for coming out. Um, students, you did a fantastic job tonight. I can't believe your composure and your confidence up there. Um, very well done. Thanks to the teachers and advisors and administrators um, for teaching our children um, kindness. It's really, it's really a big deal. Um, we have lots of uh, exciting initiatives around the district, um, wonderful things happening. We've got great sports teams. At, um, um, we've got plenty of uh, technology. We've got all kinds of good things happening in the district, but, but um, caring and kindness um, is, is at the top. So it's um, so important that that's taught to our children. I right, thank you very much. And uh, we'll take uh, some uh, words from the, the rest of the committee, and then we'll take a short break and look at some of the projects and meet some of you. Um, any comments from the committee? Yeah. Of um, everyone did such a great job. Uh, every school, it, it's great to see what you guys are doing and you're reaching out to the community and across the world with uh, the Brigham Army program. Um, I must say, though, Pacacha and my daughter participated in the duct tape challenge and actually <laughs> actively fundraised for the first time in her life. <laughs> um, and then the adopt a cough, uh, she finally did chores, which is amazing. So um, those were great, and both great causes. Um, and the SWIFT program, the, the party they put on, or that celebration they put on, uh, was fantastic. And it was a great day. So well done. Thank you. Uh, I'll keep it short and sweet overall. I was so proud of you. Keep it up. And thank you, thank you, thank you to the teachers and the principals and admin staff, everyone that helps to make it possible because, you know, we lead by example, and I think you guys are fabulous so thank you. I just want to say thank you all so much. It was just great to see. And when I was teaching back in the uh, dark ages, you didn't do things like this, so this is a nice twist on education. I really, really love it. Thank you so much, all of you. I would like to thank all our students, the teachers, and the principals that are involved in this. It's a great thing you do for the community. And every year I come here and I see this and it's like one of the best school committee meetings that I've been to, just for the, the way you people do things for the community. And I apologize for being late, but um, I wish I was on time, but I, couldn't, I just couldn't get here. But um, I'm here and I want to thank every single one of you the program that you created and are doing for the community and for our children. Thank you. We're going to turn it back to Dr. Burnell before our short recess. Dr. Burnell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I, I think what's important to know is this really is a glimpse of the many projects that are ongoing across our schools. And as I started off, uh, we're appreciative of the support we get from Auburn in the greater community, statewide and, and national and, and across the world. So kudos to all of our students, to the teachers, the principals, and the parents for your support too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now we'll take a short recess now to check out some of the projects and meet some of the students and their advisors, instructors. All right, let's call the meeting back to order. Get things moving along. Welcome everyone. I will now turn it back over to Dr. Brunel. Thank you, Mr. Chair.
With your permission, I'm going to turn it over. I'd like to introduce Mrs. Chrissy Caruso from Swanton Road Intermediate School. She is the leader of our Strings program, and I will turn it over to her for introductions. Excellent. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Chrissy Caruso. I am the proud to say that I am the orchestra director of our Swanson, the third, Swanson Road third grade strings. This is the first year we've ever had the program. Um, and a little bit later I'll be presenting about kind of what this is all about, but we're making history tonight. These are the first Auburn Public School string players, and they will soon be growing up and getting older, and we'll have a nice big symphonic band. Uh, and so today we're going to be playing for you Riptide, a really famous song by Vance Joyce. And please feel free to sing along once we get to the singing portion. Uh, I know it's Juniper already, so please feel free to laugh about it. They'll kick me out. <laughs> I got Dan from church to sing it, so. <laughs> <laughs>
turn it over with the music department headed by uh, Mr. Colin Myers, our finance director, with him is Mr. Nick McKee, who led the Aka Rockets um, in New Park High School, Mr. Leslie from Swanson Road, as well as Mrs. Caruso that you've just met. So they're going to provide an overview, uh, basically, of where our music program currently is. It's made some great strides this year, and where they're hoping to take it. So I'll turn it over to you, Mr. Myers. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, thank you for allowing us uh, to be here tonight. There's been a lot of changes in the music department this year. We're really excited about them. You actually seen the first two uh, here tonight, two brand new ensembles, the opera is led by Mr. Peak and the uh, string ensemble led by Mr. Uh, Caruso. So really excited to be offering these uh, opportunities for our students. Um, this is the first time we've ever really had a string program in Auburn before. This, this is a really exciting development. We can't wait to see where that's going to go as it progresses, progresses to the grades. Um, uh, this year, we've also been able to offer our beginning band program that starts in fifth grade. It used to be have a fee, a $300 fee, to start uh, a wind instrument in fifth grade. And um, we, and along with that, I had to give huge credit to um, Mr. Wesley and Dr. Lopez for putting the breaks together with just a slight, slight tweak of the schedule. We were able to uh, offer that program without the fee, which broke down barriers to access for our families. And um, between that and some cost savings on an annual field trip at the middle school, we actually ended up saving Auburn families about $28,000 this year without reducing any programming to students at all. So um, without further ado, I'll turn it over to uh, Mr. O'Keefe. He's going to talk about some of the changes at the high school. <clears throat> Thank you so much for, for having us tonight. Um, it being my first year in the district, it's um, been a, such a wonderful uh, nine months here. Um, and you know, all, all the changes I make, um, and I know I share this philosophy with my colleagues, that we're, we're really hoping to make sure that all any kid that comes to the Auburn Music Program is ready to go on to the next step. And so a lot of the changes that you're going to see in the high school are reflected in that kind of philosophy. Um, acapella is huge right now. If you've seen Pitch Perfect, it really kind of stirred the pot a little bit. But there are national organizations for intercollegiate acapella. Um, so I knew, and, and from previous work in other districts, I knew that um, a great way to energize the choral program here at the high school would be to start the Aka Rockets. Um, and I really do think of them as the musical ambassadors of, of AHS. So when people need to hear music, I can send an a cappella group and they need nothing but a pitch pipe and a little bit of space to sing. Um, tonight you did see, I have seniors that have already graduated who are in college orientations, and so you saw a little subsector, it was 13 kids during the school year, so you could see them. Uh, and, and really trying to get music out into the community. We sang at the uh, home openers for the basketball teams here, we sang the national anthem uh, at the winter carnival, uh, we even made it to a track meet, which was awesome. And um, I'm really looking forward to, this was kind of the, the pilot year, um, so I'm really looking forward to taking them out and getting them some exposure and kind of building a name for the Ombre and Acapella program, which is exciting. Um, is there another one? I think there's more. <laughs> um, we also resurrected Chapter 4634 of the Trium National Music Honor Society. So students with a 2.5 who are uh, engaged in an ensemble and who are ready to take the next step in their leadership and service um, can apply for admission into the Trium Society. It's sponsored by the National Association for Music Education. So um, co-advised with me and Judy Bailey, uh, the band director here at the high school. Um, we're very excited to have this. It just got off the ground this year. We just elected our first e-board. So we have a whole slew of juniors, rising seniors, that are going to be leading the way. And um, it's a great way for kids to be able to learn uh, some leadership opportunities. And again, getting what we do out of the bubble of high school, of Auburn High School, and getting out into the community. So you're going to see her a lot from Trium in terms of musical service and other service, just regular regular community service, because as we can see from tonight's presentations, it's a big part of, of developing humans, and that's what we're doing. Uh, <laughs> and then, we did have a very successful production this year. I'm not sure if you were able to make it to Les Mis. If you did, um, it, was very, it was very successful. Um, 
We really we brought over a thousand people in to see the show, over three shows. Um, we were we enroll in an awards program sponsored by Mount Wachusett Community College called, uh, their theater is called Theater at the Mount, TAM, so they have the TAMIs, which is uh, 23 schools all submitted applications to have judges. We had eight judges come and see the show. And um, we received seven nominations. I won't read them to you, but we even, we did win two. Um, uh, sophomore Derek Brigham for his portrayal of uh, Tenardier. And um, our fifth grader, Tyler Poshkis, won the Rising Star for his, um, uh, his part in Gavroche. Um, so yeah, so for next year, I really, uh, I'm very passionate about choral music, and I'm very passionate about theater, and I, you know, I never want to stir the pot too much when you start a new job. So this year it was, you know, <laughs> let's add, let's add the Arca Rockets, and let's get things rolling with Lapeed style for, for a year, and next year um, we are adding uh, a straight play, so we will be doing, I'm not sure what it is yet, but uh, we are adding a play to the November lineup. So so students that are not necessarily vocalists, but are actors and actresses and, and directors and stage stage managers can work on that too, because you know if you can study it in college, you should be able to study it in the Auburn High School. So we're excited to do that. Um, we were able to add a music and theater two course, so um, we're excited to be able to kind of add theater into the elective, the elective study here at, at AHS. Um, we had really great, I, I've had 35 students in the two sections of theater here, Theater 1, and they were very hungry for more. So we have about 20 enrolled for Theater 2, and I'm looking forward to being able to put on productions through those classes and, and possibly reaching out to the younger younger schools and doing performances for them as part of their final projects. Again, to just kind of make sure that Auburn as a community has a representation with the arts. Um, and we're gonna be establishing kind of a two-year musical cycle of a family blockbuster and a artistic choice every other year. So Les Mis was, you know, it's, we want everybody in the community to enjoy what we're doing here. Les Mis was maybe not appropriate for fifth grader, or for, for, you know, under about fifth grade, I think, but um, so now every other year we'll do a family blockbuster that everybody can come and enjoy it. And most of the time they'll still be able to enjoy it, but we want to make sure that kids are being trained not just to do The Wizard of Oz every other year. We want to make sure that they do other things too and, and send them to college and into college auditions with a really great background. Um, and yeah, and I'm already working in, on developing theater three and four courses to kind of keep going into the future here. So we're very excited. Um, if you could see, if you're looking at the picture, you can get a hint of maybe what next year's show may be if you're looking at the flying figures in the background and we're working hard to fundraise for a flying system to come in from Las Vegas of all places we have to rent it from Las Vegas. So uh, to get people off the ground, literally, not just figuratively. So we're very excited <laughs> and uh, that's pretty much pretty much what's happening in AHS. So thank you very much. <laughs> So we'll see by next the time, we're going school. also known um, to the same goal, but and, um, people to this year, and so you guys are seeing the same goal this year, and it's funny because when Mr. Lapete talks about coming into a district and kind of getting the ball really rolling, at our first meeting I looked at Colin and said, so we need to start a string program, <laughs> and, uh, and it, was, it was definitely a really good conversation and it, and it came to life, which is really important. I think Auburn is a very special place. We have a, a, an extraordinarily supportive community, a, an extraordinary, extraordinarily supportive parent base, and overall our students rock. They're just awesome. So when starting this venture with these kids and these parents and when we put everything out, and Dr. Lopez especially was like, yeah, absolutely, what do you need from me? Um, so it's taken off. We, I have 25 kids in the program. I had 23 here tonight. Uh, which speaks a lot because I said, parents, not a big deal, this is something we're doing, please don't think it's mandatory, and everyone was able, mostly everybody was able to come. Uh, so I think that speaks for, you know, in itself, uh, how the program is going. So we have blown up this year, and I'm, I'm really excited to continue third grade next year, 
and bring up, or to teach third grade into fourth grade, and to bring up a new piece of third grade. Now, of course, as we all know, with starting a new strain program in Auburn, definitely comes some logistical things. So I met with Dr. Burnell not too long ago uh, about a six-year plan for our spring program. So what needs to happen in order for this program to be successful? What do we need? What's going to happen? So in the six-year plan, pretty much what it outlines is that from now until the kids, my third graders, hit fifth grade, they have me. We've worked it out scheduling-wise so that we're going to be all set to do it both before school. And I feel like you have Mr. Rob Leslie, who's been really helpful uh, with the scheduling process. He just must be really good at Sudoku. Um, <laughs> between, between that uh, and after-school things, we're going to make it work, and it's going to be awesome. This year, Strings was a paid play program, and for fourth grade and fifth grade, it won't be. Uh, just like band, we're going to save parents some money, and it's going to become a part of the school day first thing in the morning, uh, which will almost be to our flex schedule in a little while. Uh, so things get a little interesting now when the kids go to middle school because there is no string teacher there. We have an amazing band instructor, we have an amazing choral instructor. Uh, but at the end of the day, after looking at what Auburn needs and what this needs, what will need to happen at some point is a full time, another full time music teacher will need to be put in place. Uh, we talked about it happening in three years uh, because once the kids get to sixth grade, if you put a full time person in there, yes, they're going to be dealing with sixth grade orchestra only, but we have the opportunity to implement some more programs ukulele class, rock band. So what's great is we can offer our middle school students some more electives in the music world, history of rock and roll, you know, to grab some more of those kids in. Uh, so just looking ahead in three years, don't be surprised if you have plans that say, hey, I would like to put in the budget that we need another full-time person. So I can't speak enough about the program. I always tell everybody, Auburn's going to be a triple threat. People will send their kids to us for music. It's going to happen. Give it a couple of years. Um, so I'm really proud of the program, and it, you will see more from us. The music department, we can only get bigger and better. So that's my program. I know that. that's it. <laughs> Thank you very much.
it's too much. And it's heartbreaking, because all we can say is, we understand, and we're so sorry. We don't have instruments that we can provide for you. We could try to waive the fees, but still, then you're stuck with that instrument rental. So we understand that, and it's a heartbreaking conversation to have with somebody who their child just wants to play an instrument. So what's really nice is, like I said, this is the first year we haven't had to encounter that. On the opposite end, we got thank yous, because I started the year telling people it was going to be the same, and we kind of surprised them, saying, whoop, the fee's gone. So we got good news there. So, some of the challenges, I said, with this type of flex schedule is that you're noticing that we get that like empty block at the end of the day where we're kind of like hanging out, like we're not part of our teaching day, but yet we can't go home to relax yet because we have our after school activities. Uh, what's great is that Ms. Caruso is extremely flexible with that and we make that work. We can get some other things done in that time, which is super effective and it works really well. And some of the other challenges we worked into is is you say, okay, well, it's before the school day, so kids can't take the bus to get there because the buses aren't there yet. So transportation is the other thing that we start to look at. Can parents drop their kids off and they walk them there before the school day? And what we've noticed is we really haven't had a problem with attendance. The only issue is on delay days, and that's confusion, or maybe mom and dad can't, they got to have to put them on the bus because they have to get to work for 9 a.m. So that was one of the issues you ran into. But again, we know that's a handful of times that's going to happen. Very rarely is that a problem. And once it was, we did solve it. We said, yeah, we still have it. If we can make it, we are here for you. And then it's been pretty good. We haven't had too many issues. What's the nice thing is the positive impact of what we see everything listed here. And the biggest thing is the ability of the students. Because in the before program, when it's before school, it's 45 solid minutes of let's get your instrument and play and then send you to the school day. It used to be, let's scramble after school to get you into your lesson and 20 minutes of time to get your instrument out and put it away, next group's here, we gotta go. So now we see, as our concert happened last night, is the students are now gaining the ability and because of that they have more confidence. So we hope that our retention rate holds over going to the middle school level. As well. Some other things that is that I think one of the biggest ones is just that fee, and Mr. Myers spoke to that between the things that we were between multiple programs. We're saving 28000 for the taxpayers and the people that have their kids in the schools. And I think that's huge because we're not cutting programs to do that. We're thinking outside the box to do that, and we're coming up with creative solutions. And uh, the biggest thing is it's available to everybody. As Mr. Lapid said, we want it to be something where if you want to do music in any facet, whether it's through drama, through acting, through performing, through anything, you can do it. And that, there should be nothing stopping you. And I think that's extremely huge for the program. That's all I got. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, there's been additional changes going on in the middle school as well. Just briefly, um, we've been going to uh, a junior festival called Greatness for many, many years. And we thought, why, why not try to host a festival ourselves and do it a way that's tailored to our students and have an experience that we can shape. And so uh, we were able to, uh, with the help of uh, Dr. Brunel and Dr. Jose, find a way to reduce the fee and have it in Auburn uh, and if you have over 200 students participating in this program, as is, we have an absolutely enormous music program at middle school and all the way through, it's, um, we saved about $8,000 in total for families. And the reason we started working with this was because we kept getting financial aid requests from parents, and we kept getting more and more emails and phone calls saying, we'd love to do this, but I've got a kid in band and in chorus, or two kids in band, and it's, it adds up. And between that and everything else, is, is there something we can do? And so, so this is we need, this is a problem. We need to do something to resolve this. And so um, we had uh, we've invited our own judges. We had uh, Mr. Repeat and Ms. Bailey come down from the high school, and that builds a connection with the high school as well. And then we had two guest judges uh, come, and they were able to work with our students. They heard a performance, and we got to hear our students, and then do clinics for about an hour. And so. Um, they all received a gold rating, all four ensembles received a gold rating this year, which is really fantastic, we're really proud of their work. Um, and with that, we just have uh, kind of a summary that I'd like to present to you, so we'll do one second. Sorry. So, um, looking ahead, um, next year's student program continuing in the fourth grade, so the students you saw tonight will be continuing next year. Um, we're anticipating an increase in interest 
in uh, both the aqua rockets and the strain program, um, as well as uh, anticipate the growth of the fifth grade band program, because this will be the first year where we'll have be able to advertise it as a uh, program without a fee uh, completely. So, uh, and do that from the beginning of the year. Um, the return of the straight play at the high school is something we're really looking forward to, and I can't wait to find out what it is. All, all I'm with all the students for anticipating that announcement. Um, and then uh, a request for uh, one full time music position um, at the middle school, and I believe it got cut off at the bottom. This is in the year uh, 2019 2020. So we have some time uh, to get there, but just to let you know that's there. Um, I, I have to say thank you uh, for your attention tonight and for having a great team uh, of uh, both colleagues and administrators who have made us be able to make so many changes in such a short amount of time, and it's really been a, a, a benefit for all of our students, so we're really happy about that. Thank you. I'd just like to take the team back up to the podium in case there's any questions. I know there's going to be some comments, that's for sure. <clears throat> I want to start by saying it's obvious that you, you're working as a team and uh, the excitement level is, is there and we're so lucky to have you. I don't know um, who did the hiring, but um, listening, listening to you speak and the passion that you have for music, really I can see that we're heading in a, in a, in a really positive direction with this. And I think music is so important. Um, I'm a musician myself, well not that great, but I, I think it's... I think it's fantastic that, that we're going in this direction. And anything that we can do to support you, um, I'm sure I speak on behalf of my committee. That I'm sure they're going to say, say the same type of things, but um, we're, we're certainly supportive of you. And again, just, the, just the, uh, the excitement, the electricity that you guys bring to the table, it's really something, and, and the teamwork, um, fantastic. Thank you so much for the presentation, and I'm sure we're going to have some more comments for you. Wayne, anything? I would just like to say thank you. I think George about said everything I, I would have said anyway, so, but keep up the good work. Keep working as a team, and as long as you get together and teach our kids music, we're, we're happy in theater. We're happy. And thank you. I'd Any? like to say thank you also, and just to add that it's great to see that the children, their families aren't going to have to pay fees to do these things, because having money doesn't make you a good musician. That if the talent's there, it just needs an opportunity, and that's what we're doing in Auburn. I think that's wonderful. Um, I, again, I, I echo um, the comments of my fellow committee members, but I have to say, um, I, I know the kids really love, I can only speak for the Swiss kids, but I know they really love the music teachers. Mrs. Caruso did get four write-ins in the mock election for president. <laughs> <laughs> Really, thank you so much for everything that you do. Um, you know, just thoroughly impressed. <laughs> um, I echo their sentiments, but um, yeah, we're, we are very lucky to have the four of you. Uh, it's impressive to see the kids so involved and interested in music. Um, you guys are the coolest music teachers I've ever <laughs> seen before. <laughs> Certainly didn't have those back in my day. <laughs> um, Miss Caruso, the Memorial Day program, well, you you guys both put on, but the, the country song you guys sang brought tears to my eyes. It was uh, over the top, it was unexpected, and so creative, and I just feel like that's how all of you guys are across the board. So I'm looking forward to seeing the years ahead and what these kids are gonna do. So, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Dr. Brunel, did you have anything in closing? Yeah, so I, I echo what all of you um, said. It really is a dynamic team. I think one of you used the word electric or electricity um, is coming from you. And I think, you know, the Aqua Rockets, we were able to hear them uh, at graduation. And I, I don't think anyone that heard them um, didn't say just how absolutely phenomenal and chilling it was. And to see our third graders and all the way up, it's a great progression. So thank you so much. We look forward to lots of great things. Thank Thanks again. Thank you awesome. <clears throat> okay. All right. <laughs> we now move on to special recognitions. I wanted to share with you, we were recently notified by Mr. Davis, our athletic director, that our... <laughs> Um, the 2017 MIAA Special Olympics Division I Team Sportsmanship Award. 
Report, uh, which really is outstanding to our unified track and field team. This is their second year uh, in existence. Mrs. Reedy, our um, Director of Pupil Services, attended uh, the state event where they were awarded, and I know she sent some photos back to Dr. Lose and I and others, and the smiles on these children's faces is absolutely priceless. Um, so congratulations to all of them. That's fantastic. And any comments? Yeah, the video that you sent of them walking through the halls of Swiss and all the support, that was just moving. Yeah, it was wonderful. Was. Yeah. I agree. It's, it's just awesome. We continue to hit on, on all cylinders here. It's fantastic that we're, we're reaching all of our students across the board. That's beautiful. Any citizens' comments this evening? Seeing none, <laughs> you hear me? Wow, that emptied out quick. <laughs> we now move on to the student representative's report. Ms. Lurie. Hi. So as the year comes to a close, there's been a lot going on at the high school. Um, as you all know, the class of 2017 graduated on Friday, so they are now officially AHS alumni. But to thank them for their leadership and just for being great upperclassmen throughout our whole high school experience. Um, also, in sports, districts have started. Baseball and softball are actually in district semifinals tonight, so we wish them luck as well. Um, AP tests after they end, there's a bit of a lull in all the AP classes, so we have to um, new activities to do until the school year ends to keep our minds going. So most of the science classes, including environmental science, physics, and biology, have been visiting Swiss, Hag Chop, and Bryn Mawr to teach the little ones about some science lessons, and they like to interactive things, so that's always fun. Also, next week is Kindness Week at the high school, so we have a Spirit Week going, and on Friday is, uh, Friday will be our last day of the finals as well, so that's exciting. But we're excited to see all the student castle. They always have activities for us to do during Kindness Week, and we're very excited for that to spread kindness throughout the school. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Excellent. Well, since I'm in one of those moods to congratulate people and say how wonderful they're doing, I can't believe how well you presented. Um, you've been getting better and better as the years go on. Uh, a couple of years ago when I first met you, you were um, very quiet, and now you're just, uh, you're just putting yourself out there. You've got that confidence, and um, really appreciate your reports, and um, really appreciate you showing up here, and I'm um, very proud of um, the young lady that you're becoming. Any other comments for Isabella? Thank you. Awesome. Thank very you so well much. done. Your dad will be very proud. I'm going to text him actually and let him know. And that was without reading anything. It's just very impressive, Isabella. Thank you so much. And if you'd like to leave, you're more than welcome to. But thank you for giving us your time. I would now seek approval of the minutes of May 17th. I'll make the motion to approve the minutes of May 17th. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 This is a vote. Can we now move on to the superintendent's report? Thank you, Mr. Chair. What I'd like to do is turn it over to Dr. Chamberlain and Mrs. Stanek, who have prepared a presentation for you about our integrated preschool program. And also, you should find at your seats an updated brochure about our preschool program, um, some of the highlights of which they'll uh, also address in there. Program, as you know, we've been expanding it over the years, and we will touch upon that as well. Actually, while they pull that up, just to give them time to do so, um, with your permission, I'll share about the Canary Lake Park trip to seek your approval. Sounds okay. great. So the Mr. Kanarov and Mrs. Lebome are the freshman class advisors. They're seeking permission to take the students on the last day of school. It's a half day for students, but they'll actually be going for the full day for the year-end trip. It is in Canary Lake, New Hampshire, out of state, and this requires your approval. It is my recommendation that you do so. I would entertain that motion. I'll make the motion to approve the freshman class trip to Canary Lake, uh, New Hampshire, on June 19th. Do I have a any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 This vote. Looks like the preschool presentation is ready. All right. Good evening again. Dr. Chamberlain and I would like to share a little bit about the Auburn Integrated Preschool and the home of the Little Rockets. <laughs> so as you know, um, 
with your approval, we are expanding the preschool program. I'm very excited to welcome two classrooms at Pacachon. So the preschool staff that will remain here at Auden High School will be Claudia Lane, Cheryl, Cheryl Kelly, Kim Levin Savage, and they will be under the direction of um, Dr. Chamberlain, and then Linda Canezzi and Jennifer Hamilton will be joining us at Pacachon, and they will be under my direction. However, Dr. Chamberlain and I have an excellent um, working relationship. We collaborate all the time because we have the two K-2 schools, and we will just expand upon that with the expansion of the preschool program. As you know, everything we do is based on our mission, and expanding the preschool opportunity is an excellent way to expand upon that vision and mission, as well as our core values. And we will ensure that all of the new programming instills all of those core values in our students and our staff. So currently, our enrollment will be three classrooms at Auburn High School. There will be two full-day classes where there are 34 students currently enrolled, and two half-day classes for three-year-old students with 29 students. Two classrooms at Pacachon. One will be a full day class with 19 students, one half day class for four year olds with 13 students currently, and one half day class for three year old students with 15 students. And as you know, that enrollment changes on a regular basis. So that was as of the creation of our PowerPoint. <laughs> and with the introduction of the sliding fee, we have been able to expand that preschool opportunity for some families who might not have been able to take that opportunity. So we had 28 families that applied. Of those 28, 16 of those families are going to be receiving some level of financial support, and 50% of them, 8 out of the 16, have qualified for free preschool. So we are able to touch those students and families that we weren't able to before, which is very exciting. So, with the integrated approach, we are able to offer a wide variety of therapies that students may need and special education services, which include occupational, physical therapy, speech therapy, vision therapy, discrete trials if needed, and our students, we can also support the English learners through the training our teachers have received with the sheltered English immersion training. There will be nursing support, obviously, available at Pakachog, as well as the preschool. It is an NAEYC accredited program, and we will still be able to utilize the high school interns, because luckily, some of them will be able to drive up to Pakachog as well. So the ones that can drive are going to come up to Pak. <laughs> so each and every day, the teachers try to provide rich environments for the students, in which there are academic, social, emotional, and a wide variety of activities. They will have outdoor play whenever possible, large and small group circle time, snack time, reading time, and many other things. Music and movement, it's so exciting. I love coming over to the high school and visiting the preschool. It's just a fun and exciting place. And we will also be able to provide lunch for the full day students and they will be before and after school here, both at Auburn High School and at Pakachog. And at Pakachog, it will be a separate program for the preschool students. So Dr. Chamberlain is going to talk a little bit about the curriculum. So thank you. Um, what's exciting for the uh, preschool, it really is, uh, there's a bridge that's been building between the preschool and the elementary schools over the last few years, which I think is going to benefit all students. Um, and thanks to all of you, we're now, we'll now be introducing the Wonders curriculum at the preschool level as well. Um, so, you know, it's a program that's tied to the Common Core, to the state standards, it aligns with uh, appropriate preschool experiences, and it also aligns with now the programming that's present at the elementary schools. So again, it's starting that programming a little bit earlier, obviously designed for preschool age students, but that's a great link to bring that consistency to programming. <coughs> Um, included in uh, the Wonders curriculum. Um, obviously, there's a heavy focus on early literacy and, um, development. 
So oral language is a big thing, especially for our three-year-olds, getting them to express themselves. But it moves into book knowledge and alphabetic principles, phonemic and phonological awareness, print awareness, um, and yes, even early writing. Um, I looked at some samples just recently. It's amazing how they grow from the beginning of the year to the end. Um, vocabulary is big, listening and speaking, and all of that is included in the uh, Wonders curriculum. What's different about the Wonders curriculum at the preschool level is it isn't just literacy, so it also has math, some science, some social studies. It's kind of an integrated approach. Um, so they also work on sorting and classifying, spatial relationships, one-to-one -one correspondence, quantity discrimination, and a number of other skills. Um, again, science and social studies, there are music and movement things that are built in, and just on an aside, um, this year we were able to tap uh, Mr. Leslie from Swanson Road to provide some music programming in the preschool. It was fantastic. It was just great. The kids loved it. He did a lot of things with appropriate instruments for them. It was very exciting. Um, social emotional development at the preschool age is very important, right? How do I interact with these new kids and these new adults in my life? Um, and, and how do I do so appropriately? And we do take advantage of our local institutions for field trips. The post offices, uh, you know, a lot of places we can walk to. The library, the fire station, <laughs> McDonald's is a big field trip. Um, um, but what I didn't include here that I should have is the Auburn Mass PTO, our wonderful PTO that supports the elementary school, supports the preschool as well. So they um, have the kids go to Breezy Gardens in the spring and they support that for us too. So it really is becoming an integral part of the, uh, of the school experience. Yes, in preschool there are assessments, whether you like them or not, um, but they do give us some very valuable information about the early literacy and math skills that our students have and allow us to approach them at the level that they're at, like we do up through the elementary schools. We give out progress reports twice a year, there are parent conferences, um, and lots of opportunities for the parents to be involved, be involved in their children's uh, development. So it's really a great uh, program. So yeah, we're building a solid foundation for our ch children's success, right? So it really does tie with the introduction of the sliding fee scale to some of those core values of the Auburn Public Schools with making things accessible to all. So that's our story for this evening. If you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer them for you. Any questions or comments from the committee? I have a comment, actually. Um, this all looks great. I, I actually requested this because I get a lot of questions from people, they're excited about the program, they want to know more. Um, we've talked about this for years, like having this available to people that cannot afford it, and I feel like we've accomplished that mission. Um, it's really exciting to see, uh, and especially the integrated piece of it, you know, we're bringing in the kids with special needs, um, especially ones that can't afford all the special help, they're able to get the help they'll need um, right there at school. The one question I had, the um, like the preschool up at PAC, will they have like their own recesses or are they going to be integrated with all the other grades? So they will be um, having recess and outdoor play and lunch, but they will not be integrated. It will be their own special times in our schedule and whatnot. Okay. Do we have uh, equipment that's... Yes, I, oh, I'm sorry. I actually spoke to the Mr. Fahey, our facilities manager, and our equipment was actually lowered and everything um, when we moved up to Pakistan, and it is um, in line of the regulations for the children of that age as well. Perfect. Great. Well, thank you. Any other questions or comments? No, that was a great um, presentation, very, very thorough, and um, Again, we've got some exciting things happening. Uh, to to kind of echo what uh, Mrs. Harrington said, it's fantastic that everyone's going to get the same opportunity now. Um, all of our students in Auburn are going to get the same opportunity where they may not have had that before. And um, <clears throat> who better to lead them than, than us? We've got a fantastic leadership team and fantastic teachers. So I'm very confident that this program is really going to take off. Um, thank you so much. Thank Dr. Brunel. Thank you. Thank so you. I just want to thank them um, for their leadership and the members of the preschool uh, subcommittee, Dr. Lose, is on it, as well as uh, Mrs. Reedy. And really, as you said, this is really fulfilling a mission that we're really trying to embrace and removing barriers, financial barriers. So, an outstanding program that we have, and uh, our kids are lucky to, to have us. So, thank yeah. you. And through thank the chair, I have one more comment. Thank, thank both of you for going above and beyond to get this going. I mean, it's impressive what you guys have done. Um, I know it's extra work and extra time and 
schools are growing, but uh, we really appreciate it, and we think you're doing a great job. Or I think you're doing a great job. I'm sure I speak on yes. the committee. So. Yeah, they're doing all right. Okay. Yeah. No, really, to take that on above your, your daily duties, um, yeah. you, you were already, I'm sure, um, overburdened before with the expectations from, from Dr. Brunel. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. But no, going above and beyond, that's fantastic. Just a very quick question, if I may. Is this brochure, which looks fantastic, available at the public library or places like that where families could see it? Or We are in the process of getting those disseminated. We had to kind of wait to update them until we knew we kind of had our ducks in a row about how the, where everything was going to be. And, programming and all of that, but yes, they're going to be widely distributed, and certainly anyone who's new to us or inquires about the preschool will receive one of those. Great. Thank you. And if you ever want to see a busy place, come to a preschool. <laughs> we plan to. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Mary Ellen, can we incorporate that into our tour at Christmas time? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, right. yeah absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Moving on. What? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you chase me around. As we do, oh, yeah. Thank you. Look at him. <laughs> As we do annually, um, the, the great system that we have in place is, is that way because of the staff that we have. And want to just take a moment to recognize those individuals who will be retiring. An exciting time in their lives that they certainly well deserve. But as we lose retirees, obviously we lose a little bit of ourselves. Um, we'll be bringing in highly qualified individuals to to take their places as best we can. So in recognition, uh, Kathy Bynland, a grade two teacher at the Law School, Jane Dunahue, a speech pathologist who works across the district, primarily at the elementary. Uh, Kathy Toby is a grades nine to 12 health PE teacher. Cheryl DeLeo is a secretary at Auburn Middle School. Uh, Marjorie, oh, that's actually true as well. Uh, Debbie Mallet is retiring um, from the Swanson Road cafeteria. Betty Daugert is likewise retiring. She's from the Auburn Middle School cafeteria. Pat Barkis is a cafeteria assistant at Bryn Mawr School. And uh, Jan Palanik has recently resigned. He's moving on, going um, to a location in Massachusetts. He's an IA at the middle school. And also to thank Megan McGuirk, who has resigned to pursue other ventures. She's a Swanson Road ABA. So offer them, those who are retiring, our hearty thanks and congratulations. And to that end, we did draft, again this year, uh, letters of thanks that um, typically are signed by all of the committee members and myself. Uh, and once signed, we will mail them to them. You will see, as noted in the letter, um, combined years of experience is over 150 that these retirees have given to the Auburn Public Schools. So, wow. um, quite impressive. And obviously, they've all left their mark. But we wish them well, also. That's great. I would entertain a motion to sign the letters. Um, to the retirees. I'll make that motion to sign the letters to the retirees. And I'll second it. Any comments? Just to thank them for all their work and the years of service they gave to the schools. Excellent. Yeah. Well said. Any other comments? No, thank you so much for your service. Okay. Moving along. In terms oh, I'm sorry. All in favor? Aye. 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 Elaine, I thought you were going to. Give me the look. Go to yell in the All right, moving right along. So we do have memos from Mr. Fahey, Director of Facilities, and Mr. Bouvier, our Technology Director. Um, each have indicated they have some items they asked to be deemed obsolete so that they may be disposed of. And as you'll note, um, we have two pianos uh, that are left over. Uh, we kept them for a couple of years in case we would need them, and we don't. Um, once deemed obsolete, though, it would be our intention to see if perhaps the Senior Center or Auburn Youth and Family Services, some organization in Auburn uh, would like those. And then also in terms of the technology piece, there are on the back side um, 25 computers, some monitors, printers, and two TVs. Um, Mr. Booby has already checked with our technology department here if there's anything that they could use um, in terms of the teaching of students. If not, though, they will be um, recycled through a mass-based company that comes and removes the hard drives, everything is done confidential. So it is my recommendation that you deem those obsolete. I would entertain that motion. I'll make, make a motion. <laughs> make a motion to deem obsolete the surplus electronic equipment. And two points. Second. Any discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. 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 This is vote. The next item, the Aspen Valley Collaborative, as you know, um, we have been uh, accepted into it. It's now going through all of the uh, member school committees, but they have included a, an amended uh, actual agreement there. So this, as you can see, indicates that the Auburn Public Schools is a new member school district. Um, they did make a revision to the mission statement. Um, as well as to their purpose. So this does need your approval, and once so, I will turn it back to Aspen Valley Collaborative, and once they have it from everybody, it will be approved. Um, it will be sent down to the commissioner. I would entertain that motion. I'll make a motion to approve the Aspen Valley Collaborative Agreement amended as of the board meeting on May 26, 2017. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Well, we thank them for accepting us mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 This is a vote. And we now move on to unfinished business. So as I had shared with you, Dr. Lozay and I had mentioned at a recent meeting, we were looking to see with the lease um, coming due, whether we would stay with iPads or Chromebooks. As per Mr. Bouvier's memo, the decision has been made to remain with the iPad program, as we had suspected that it, it very well may. Um, so this is for Vicky and uh, Mr. Bouvier will with a lease agreement. As noted in the third paragraph, um, you can see in there that actually the cost of the iPads has actually come down, likely due to competition with Chromebooks and such. So they are working to secure the best pricing through a lease as possible, and we will bring that forward to you at some point in the future. I uh, wanted to provide you an update regarding enrollment. There was actually a, a error made in the last memo sent to you, and it had indicated that there were more students incoming um, kindergarten path than there actually are. I think it may have said 77 at the time, um, so that was an error on my part. But there are actually 60 students who are registered for kindergarten. They have at Path and Child also outreached the families who, per the census, have a child eligible to enter kindergarten just to be sure to know if there are any more coming, and that has actually gotten them to the 60 from 57. So with those numbers, they will not need four teachers there. They'll only need the three teachers. That will allow for 20 students per class. And that actually helps us with the issue, if you remember at the May 17th meeting, when we need an additional first grade the Britain Must School. Mm -hmm. So we will simply um, make a transfer. But I just wanted to clarify that for you. And what we always try to do is be sure that we look at, uh, particularly at Bryn Mawr and PAC, where they're the the two distinct programs run separately to be sure that their class sizes run very close. And this is actually going to keep them in almost exact proximity. So wanted to make you aware of that change taking place. In terms of the enrollment projection, I had um, it would be discussed at the last meeting about whether or not we should look into um, getting an official enrollment projection, because we had certainly done just very um, at a rudimentary level based on making some assumptions of how many students will enroll in kindergarten uh, going through the grades. And we did actually outreach NESDEC, the New England School Development Council, and they indicated that if we were to become an affiliate member, which would cost $1,748, they actually will conduct an enrollment projection as part of that. Um, there are some other benefits. Um, they, they will do advertisement and help do recruitment should you wish to do so um, when they, when you bring on a superintendent at some point uh, in the future and um, they do some special ed enrollment projection information as well um, but my recommendation at this time at least is to not join as an affiliate member yet um, but I think that what I'd recommend that we do is to have us continue to watch it internally for me to report back to you about mid-year next year when we start to get, by about February, we get some incoming kindergarten student data. And then at that time, if we see that there's another um, spike, I really do think it's a, a two-year bubble uh, at Bryn Mawr School with first and second grade, and then it will even out when they get to Swanson, um, then I think you could give it consideration. But my suggestion would be rather than spend the money now, let's just hold off and wait at least for another six months. Sounds good. Are you going somewhere? The chair. Sorry. Huh? No, you're no, going no, somewhere? that's just one of the things they offer, but no, no. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Jesse? Um, the Bryn Mawr 
first grade. Do you see that? I can't remember if you already answered this in a prior meeting. Do you see that as a permanent change to keep that extra first grade classroom, or do you think that's just temporary? So I think what would happen, um, based on the numbers, so those going into kindergarten at Bryn Mawr, last time I checked, so it's at 86. So um, the first grade class, I believe right now, they've just gotten another registrant, um, they're up to 110 students. The kindergarten class is at 86, incoming kindergarten class is at 86, and the second grade class is at about 90 or so, somewhere in that vicinity. So I really think what we would anticipate doing is the teacher in first grade would then move up to second grade the second year. Okay. So, um, because based on these kindergarten numbers, four teachers would be ample. Their class size would be about 21 when the incoming kindergarten get to first. It's that first grade class with the 110, they have almost a, another full class of students. So then whether you know they would do any looping or the teacher would go up and they just re-divide the kids, um, that's what we anticipate doing, at least for the short term, and then we'll see where it goes. So you plan on keeping that the new classroom there for the long term? Correct, at least, at least for the two years. And when Dr. Lose and I met with uh, Dr. Chamberlain, Bryn Mawr School um, really is at its premium in, in terms of space. So we've added that one classroom. Um, they still do utilize downstairs. They have some reading materials and such there. She had expressed that if after the two years it's not needed, that she could utilize that space perhaps as an additional reading room or in a room where students could go for intervention and such. So her thought right now is that it would stay um, even after its need was fulfilled for the, that large class. Okay. All right, thank you. Welcome. Any other questions, comments? Thank you for that. We now move on to new business. So I just wanted to share with you, we had put on, uh, with students last week, the 19th, the 19th and teachers the 20th, it is up to you. We do have a school committee meeting scheduled um, for the 21st. It's up to you whether you'd like to hold that or not. I will say that um, Dr. Lozet, Mrs. Grisbicki, and Mrs. Zotter and I did try to put, as you can see on this lengthy agenda, all of the typical things from the year end uh, in case you decided to forego it. Any comments, questions? Whatever we need to do, mm -hmm. we're just fine yeah. with me. I'm flexible. Yeah, if we do need to have a meeting, then you can call them. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm okay with foregoing the, the meeting, and uh, as Wayne said, if something okay. comes up, we could always at least bring a few mm -hmm. of us together. Okay. So I would entertain that motion. I make a motion to vote to cancel the school committee meeting scheduled for Wednesday, June 21st. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 This is a vote. Thank you. Um, believe it or not, we're already starting to talk about the November MASS, MASC mm -hmm. conference. Uh, the early bird opportunity that does save um, some substantial dollars mm -hmm. is due by July 15th. Um, you get a reduced rate of $375 rather than the $475. So if you are interested or planning to attend, um, if you can let Mrs. Zotner know, you'll take care of your own hotel arrangements, but she'd be happy to get us registered. Sounds good. Thank you. And you'll fax it over for us if we bring you the information? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. For the hotel. For the form. Yeah. And the, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you. And wanted to share with you actually a, a connection that we've made as part of the best practices um, grant and also that uh, data collection that we did for our incoming kindergarten students with the YWCA. It's a family and community partnership offering. And we're going to be able to bring the um, play DW Counts Down to Kindergarten based on the author series. And that's going to take place at Auburn Middle School on Saturday, June 17th. It's going to actually be preceded by Mr. Kim at Apple Tree Arts. We'll come in and do a presentation. Uh, the City Stage Company out of Boston is going to actually perform the play. So Dr. Chamberlain and Mrs. Wurz and Mrs. Um, Stanek will be advertising it. We have all of the email addresses of our incoming kindergarten students. So they'll all be invited with their families to come to this. It's a great transition to kindergarten program. And they'll also be given a book by the WYMCA, um, too. Oh, so it's going to be a really nice event. And then our upcoming events, uh, as you can see, we are sprinkled with spree day activities. They, we were at uh, Swanson Road earlier today, and 
Dr. Lopez, among others, were in the dunk tank, um, we heard, and 54 Degrees was probably not the best day to do it, but they were good sports. Um, we've got stuck up days upcoming, um, including for all of our elementary schools, and right up through uh, eighth graders coming up to the freshman year. There are award ceremonies, and just a reminder that the eighth grade graduation will take place on Thursday, June 15th at Auburn Middle School at 10 o'clock. 9 a.m.? Uh, 10, 10 it's 9 a.m. Oh, it's 9 a.m. Okay. It's 9? It's 9 a.m. Because it's okay. they have to be done before the first lunch is at 11.05. Yeah. We'll so send you a reminder, but 9 o'clock on that. I checked on it. Okay. <laughs> I was planning to sleep that morning. <laughs> well, you're not going to know. No, I'm not. <laughs> Thank you for that. You're welcome. We now move on to the teaching and learning report. Dr. Lose. Things to update you on in your package. You will find a listing of the colleges and universities that our high school seniors are accepted to. And if you look at it, you'll see that there's almost 90 different colleges across the country that our students have been accepted. It's an impressive list. It's once again something that all of can be very proud of. Absolutely. The next item, SBIRT, we talked about this a few meetings back. SBIRT stands for Screening, Brief Intervention, and Referral to Treatment. The protocol to screen students around potential substance abuse and to provide either positive reinforcement for not being involved in those choices or to refer them to treatment if there is an issue. Um, we completed our second round of training on May 24th here at Auburn High, along with some other local um, areas like Leicester sent some people also to that training. And then our Aubin team met together on May 30th, and we actually crafted Aubin's implementation plan. Some of the preliminary plans are that the grade nine students will be administered this craft, craft survey before February vacation next year, with our eighth grade students being administered this in January. We will send out a letter to parents initially at the start of the school year in the registration packets and not the first packets of the home. And that's just to give them an overview of the program, and then we'll follow up again a few weeks prior to the screening. We will send one where parents can actually opt out if they do not want their child to participate. Our nurses and our guidance people will be the individuals doing the screening, and then we'll have backup of school psychologists in case there's any um, intervention that we need to take at that point. So we'll keep you updated as we go through. This is the first time for all of us. It is a mandate from the state that we have to implement this, so um, we'll let you know. We also wanted to update you a little bit on some of the summer work that's coming forward. Every year we ask teachers for proposals. We propose a few committees that we think should work on some curriculum. And this year we actually have many, many, many proposals. We do have 16 different groups approved to work on some curriculum work, a lot of it through the ASPR high school, but also after our first year of implementing the Wonders program, we need to make some refinements to those pacing guides and some of the resource cards that we've created. As Dr. Chamberlain said, we'll be starting Wonders at the pre-K, so we want to do some planning for that. We recently adopted iScience at the middle school, so we want to give teachers an opportunity to some planning for their first year of implementation. We want to adjust some goal math assessments. Um, the STEM program at the Auburn Middle School is expanding, so we would like them to do some planning around that. Our technology teachers, Sarah Canal and Carrie LeBret, Breton, will meet together and will actually do some work on some vertical alignment of that curriculum. And finally, we've been talking about waiting for the state to approve those science standards. That's been done, so we plan to do a lot of work with that this summer as well. So we're excited that all our teachers are so invested in doing this work, and hopefully next year we can fund even more for that type of work. And finally, I just want to give you an update on the early college program. We've talked to you several times over the past few meetings around our partnership with Quinsig College. This past spring, we offered two courses, Introduction to Microcomputers, which was taught by Mr. Chris LaJoy at here at Auburn High School, and also English 101 taught by Dr. Cynthia Bazinet. This really, those both of those courses came at zero cost to our students to get three college credits because of a grant that I've been sitting wow. at. And so that was a wonderful opportunity. Mm -hmm. This summer we will offer for the second time Mr. Broke Movia's course, which is called Introduction to Computer Technology. Uh, last year he had about 14 students who anticipate the same. This will cost students $250, which is still 
very inexpensive for three college courses. And mm -hmm. at the end of the summer, when you look back, you'll see almost 50 students have been able to take an opportunity like this. Because their resume looked that much stronger, their applications in the college it really helps our kids with competitive so I'm very excited about it. Mm -hmm. Great program. That's it. Any comments, questions? Yeah. Thank you for that report, Dr. Lose. We now move on to business and financial. Okay. Um, in your packets, I provided a, a year-to-date budget report, um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Along with that, I've also given you, um, with, the, with the allowance of the omnibus transfers, I have a, um, three separate omnibus transfers that I've put in your packet for you to review. And if there's any questions on those, I'd be happy to answer as well. Seeing none. Okay. Moving on, um, Packet Truck Accelerated Repair Update. Um, MSB Accelerated Repair Route Replacement for pro the Project in Packet Truck is moving ahead as scheduled. Mr. Fahey and I have been working closely with our OPM, which is Hill International, and CG Fahey Architects to ensure that each of the steps are completed in a timely manner. All contractors and subcontractors have been selected through the 30 B bidding process and plans have been set in place for the work replacement to begin once school lets out. Um, the building repair project has been submitted to the budget itself, has been submitted to MSBA and approved, and I'll continue to provide updates as we move along. But we're excited to see the new process, so I'm happy about that. Any questions? So that's good. Mm -hmm. Um, in, your, in your packet, there is a memo to Dr. Grinnell from Mr. Bouvier. Um, after discussions with Dr. Jose, Mr. Canfield, and Mr. Gagnon, Mr. Bouvier is, like, is requesting to increase the iPad insurance premium. He's looking to increase it from 40 Currently, we, we charge $40 for the insurance premium. He'd like to increase it to the $50 per iPad, effective for the 2017-2018 school year. Um, currently, when we replace, if there's a broken glass on the iPad, it currently costs us $49 to replace that, which is a discount for us. Normally, it would be $99, but, but still, with the $49, we felt like $50 was a fair price. So, um, he's looking for approval to have that start this uh, coming school year. I would entertain that motion. I make a motion to increase the iPad insurance premium from $40 to $50 per student for the 2017-2018 school year. Do I have a second? second? Any discussion? There's a question. What do we do with the repeat offenders? Lock them up. No. <laughs> Basically, it's got a cost the iPads. Space. There is something that the parents have to sign. It's an agreement when they take out, you know, and fill up the insurance form, and they have to fill out and sign each specific spot. Most times, if it's like an accidental, it'll cover it up to every three times. Two times. Two times, and then the third time that they they will have to, the family will have to pay. If there's a deliberate breakage, if a student has been negligent, or if it's been stolen, you know, stolen, and, and it's inappropriate use of the um, the um, device, we I will pursue that with the parents in sending them a bill for the cost to replace the iPad. So. Any other questions or comments? Seems reasonable. All in favor? Aye. 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 There's a vote. In your packet, I also put, to get, put a memo in there regarding um, the school committee signatures on the warrant tables. Um, for the acts of 2016, Chapter 218, the modernization of finance and government, Section 58 allows for school committees to um, designate one specific person to sign. Um, all their bills, they approve all the bills, the drafts, the orders, and the payrolls. Um, that one person would, it, also I would recommend, they recommend having it designate, like a second designate just in case it's a backup, but that one person would be able to come to the school district and sign the warrant payables, and then at the next scheduled um, school committee meeting, we would report on that. And my thought on that was that I would put together a form where we would list each of the actual Warrant payables with the amount, the date of the warrant payable, um, who was signing off, and, um, and, and present that at each of the school committee meetings. I would take that responsibility upon myself to bring that to the meeting and put this part of the packet. And then I would also keep it on file in my office 
So it would, it would allow basically me to choose one person to come in and sign the warrants for you as a group. Um, and then at the next meeting, that person would just present that they came in and signed this many warrants and explain if there's any questions or whatever. But it would alleviate from having to have three people come in, especially during like summer months or vacation periods where we might need to get a warrant payable out. And it's, you know, it's tough to get like three signatures, which, which are probably required in order to send to the town halls. But they're allowing um, this new modernization that allows for any um, um, committee like that is more than one person to to do this. So like board of select, we can also see the other boards, local governments. So I would recommend, I think it, it's a good thing. So, but I, I mean, it would be up to you and I'm opening it up for discussion on your part. Makes sense to me. The only concern I have is if that one person is is away for a couple of weeks, and is there another? Well, that's what I would, I would suggest that you vote to have one person and then maybe a backup designated person. So you have one specific person you vote on tonight with the fact that if that person is unable to attend or come in and sign, that the other person would be the backup. So we're still voting on two people, not one person, and then for designees, it's still, it needs to be two names. Is that correct? Well, you would vote for one person, and then the second person would be the backup. So you are voting on two people, I guess. But they don't both have to come in. Right. One or the other. So. so first we have to vote to approve this new yes. measure. Yes, accept it to move forward. Then it's agreeable to you to make a motion to approve. And then this is something that would take place um, at the reorg meeting every year. We would decide at that point who that person would be once again. To the chair, I think that would make sense. Right here, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Any? I'll do it. I don't care. I'll do it. What I'll kind of notice would I get? <laughs> I was going to say, I don't mind doing it because she's still up in New Hampshire. Yeah, if you want to be the backup. But I mean, we'll be around a lot more this summer. But is right. it like We're trying to get as much notice as possible? But right with the next few weeks, it's going to be a little bit crazy trying to get the warrants in and get everything into the town. Um, we usually have to have it a week before the actual check date. So. Just so we can get a copy and get it over to the town hall. So, so okay. Well, why don't we do the motion to approve it and then talk about who's well, going to do right it? Ahead. I would entertain that motion. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve only one designated member of the school committee to approve and sign all bills, schedules, and warrants. Do I have a second? And go all, to jail for us if there's a mistake. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. It is a vote. And we do want that person right now, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I nominate Gail. I'll do it. I'll, do, I'll be your backup. Okay. All right. Because I know of one definite time I won't be here. So. Okay. But other than that. Yeah. Send me a text. Okay. All right. So now, now that I know how to do that. Okay. We have the two. Um, <laughs> Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It is a vote. Thank you. I appreciate that. That will help me from not having to contact all of you and ask you to come in. Right. Okay. So um, moving on. Um, Auburn Food Services um, currently participates in the Tech um, Collaborative, which is the education collaborative um, for the food programs for their um, milk and bread and um, the groceries. Um, so they received notification of the group buying bids for food services for fiscal year 17-18. The bid awards were finalized on June 1st and are, are, since they participate in the tech, under the new USDA's new um, procurement regulations effective for 2017-18, um, they're required to take each of the bidders and um, sign a contract with that actual, uh, in the past it hasn't happened that way just accepted the bid and moved on, but now they want each vendor that specifically has been awarded a bid to sign a um, contract and we sign it as well on our end. So Dr. Burnell will sign the contract if you approve this. Um, currently, the um, vendors that were category awards are as follows. For bread, Duva Distributors was awarded a bid. For milk, it was Maine's Paper and Food, Ser food Service. For paper and disposables, Mansfield Paper Company. For water and seltzer water, it was Polar Beverage. 
and for groceries, Cost of Fruit and Produce Company Incorporated, as well as Thirsty Foods. Um, if you agree to accept that, we will have Dr. Brunel sign it and send those off to the members. I would entertain that motion. I'll make a motion to approve the tech food and non food bids as listed above for the 2017 2018 school year. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 This vote. All right. And we also each year for the school district for our paper, for copy paper and school supplies, as well as computer supplies, we participate in the French River bid. Uh, those bids were finalized. Um, the, bid, the bid openings were, they had several different, uh, five nine was for school supplies. Um, the bid opening and the bid award was on um, 525. The categories for the school supplies, um, the, the way they bid it out is line. Um, um, each item is bid out separately, so there's different um, groups of bidders that uh, apply. So the, the groups that were for the school supplies that were awarded were Cascade, Discount School Supply, Hertz Brothers, National Art School Supplies, Office Depot, Pyramid School Products, School Specialty, Standard Stationery, Staples Business Advantage, Scott Electric, and WB Mason. So those were for the school supplies. Computer supplies, um, the multiple vendors, they, their bid opening was on 5-9 with the award on 5-25-2017. The vendors were Cascade, Office Depot, Treehouse, GA Blanco, Staples Business Advantage, and WB Mason. And as far as the copy paper, there are um, normally there are two categories. Um, category one is for a delivery from one location, and the winner for that was WB Mason. And category two for multiple delivery points, and that winner was Contract Paper Group. We probably would use Contract Paper Group only out of the category two, only because we prefer to have it delivered to our various locations. Sure. Um, it makes it very difficult to have to transport the paper from one location to the next. So that was in the amount of $21.73 $21 per carton for that bid with um, Contract Paper. So I'm going to ask that you accept these um, bid awards for the French River that we participate in. I would entertain that motion. I make a motion to approve the French River bid as presented by the meeting by the business manager. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Let's vote. And then there was one last item that was not, um, was not vote. One last item that I wanted to just bring to your attention. In discussing the preschool program that we just recently heard a great presentation from our two principals this evening, um, this fall the uh, Food Service Department would like to begin a new pre-K school lunch program for all Auburn full-day pre-K students um, in, in the support to support increasing access to nutritional meals at school and recognizing the strong research that supports the connection between nutrition and academic success. Um, she's looking, our food service director, Mrs. King, is looking to get approval to set the price for the pre-K lunch at $250 for the 2017-2018 school year. Currently, the school lunch prices are for K-5 through five is $275, and the middle and high school student price is $3. The rationale she offered for the lower price with the, the pre-K lunches would be a, lot, a little bit smaller portions, <laughs> and um, also with the caloric content as well. But the other thing that she was thinking about was um, looking to incentive, to make an incentive for families to participate in our program. Um, they currently participate in kindergarten, and they have it in the past with just being half-day programs with the SNAP program, but to try to promote um, participation in our program so that it's kind of a lifelong process where they start at pre-K and they move up through the grades and they become familiar with the program. So I'm looking for your approval of a pre-K lunch price of two fifty. I would entertain a motion to approve that two fifty charge for pre-K lunch. I'll make a motion to approve the rate of two fifty per lunch for students in the full day preschool program at both AHS and PAC for the 2017-2018 school year. Do I have a second? Second. 
Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 There's a vote. Thank you all very much. Thank you for that report. We now move on to policies. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So we're recommending a change in the community use of facilities. And as noted in here, and actually this was as part of a discussion even prior to the most recent event um, that took place, that any organization that utilizes our school um, grounds or fields, that they be required to have with them a working AED. They do sell portable um, AEDs and to have at least one trained individual on site with CPR and AED. I did speak to our fire chief uh, about this as well as some members of the safety advisory team. And uh, currently it seems the Little League already has that expectation that the coaches have to be CPR and AED trained uh, and to have such equipment available. So I think that um, in speaking with him, they would the fire department would be willing to provide training to them. And for the cost of a portable AED, I think it would give us all peace of mind to know that they're available at any time um, on our facility. So it is my recommendation um, that you approve that amendment. Uh, assuming you do so, we will notify all of the organizations uh, to make them aware of this expectation and support them in making sure that they're prepared uh, for it to, to be go into place. Okay. Um. I would entertain that motion. Make a motion to approve the updates to the building use policy and form. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion, comments, questions? I think it's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. I just think it's a real good idea. Mm. I'd just like to understand the, where, where the, the location of the portable unit is going to be. Is it going to be inside the schools or outside the schools? So what I'm thinking is um, we currently have them, when they utilize, um, let's say, our gym, we have them located in the school. So they could certainly utilize one if it was available. But the idea would be that they would actually purchase a portable AED and have it with them at, the, say, they were renting the field out here for, for a soccer game. Um, so there would be at least one individual trained to use the AED, and it really is very, very simple to use. It mm. talks you through it. Um, but also someone who's CPR trained, just in case there was ever an accident, to try and buy some time before the ambulance can arrive. Yep. So they'd actually be responsible for purchasing an AED and having it. Okay. So each each and every coach from from T ball up who's utilizing our facilities would need to have that. So I think it would be um, based on organization. So when I spoke with the fire chief, what he indicated is up at the Pappas Complex, they have an AED, at least one, they may have another, that is mounted and is available for the coaches who utilize that. So they must be AED and CPR trained. So it's one that's there. Now, whether we would go that route and perhaps put one of the concession stand out here might be an option to do. Um, but according to the chief, the Little League already requires national, I guess, um, all coaches to be CPR and AED trained. So we would expect that they would be at least one individual from any organization that utilizes our fields um, or grounds to have somebody on site who's CPR and AED trained. Okay. That's just, I, I'm just thinking that would be a lot of those, a lot of those units that would have to be purchased mm -hmm. because there's, we're utilizing all of the schools. I mean, you know, thankfully we have the opportunity to use the schools, but mm -hmm. we're, we're at Bryn Mawr, we're at Pakachog. Mm -hmm. and, um, so I, I think in terms of in the schools, um, where we've got them already there and mounted, we may be able to give them access to those. What I'm more concerned with is sure. if there's an organization who, for example, is using um, the Pakachog field outside and has no access to the building it's on a weekend, that we would require that they have a portable ADD available to them. Okay. Yeah. Do you know, would they be expensive to purchase? You know, we, we purchased, uh, they were purchased um, through Dr. Pat. Right, I remember the ago. ones that what he had in the building. We have purchased some in the interim. Uh, I know like for the new middle school we purchased I'm going to guess they were somewhere in the vicinity, I don't remember, maybe $500? I don't know exactly. I, I would have to look. 
Um, what is expensive is the to replace the batteries, and I believe that's in every other year replacement. Um, if we had to do those, but they are reusable. The, oh, the except EVs, yes. yeah. Yes. So okay, yep. it's not a throwaway thing. Yep. Just it's just the batteries. Correct. Well, I think when you're talking about stuff like this and the safety and the health of our, the teachers and coaches that are out there and the children, I mean, what's the cost to save a life? I think it's more important to have them and save a life than worrying about the cost of it. Yeah. I have a question for the chair. Um, now, would this go for, like, let's say PTO is holding an event in one of the fields? Are they going to be held responsible for also having one of these? The way this is written would be yes. So that any time any of um, the fields, but typically PTO typically is run in unison with the with the school. So there would be school staff there, um, and, and could very well be someone trained there. You know? um, so I'm trying to think of a PTO event that happens that's you know, like a meeting. Like the the back-to-school picnic, but I guess that yeah. is run through the... Through the school, yeah. yeah. So there would be staff there. Um, I think it's more primarily the sports teams and such. George, you seem concerned. Are there sports teams that you know of that don't have the equipment already? Or that oh, would we, be a struggle or something? Yeah, we don't, we don't have the equipment. No, when there's never really there's never really been a call for it, and I, I understand the you know Wayne's comment that it's you know it's a life, and and, um, and after what we've just gone through, it's it's, it's yeah. understood. But um, personally, I'd like a little bit more time to to ponder this. But if if we put it to a vote at this point, um, I wouldn't be in support. However, I'm not trying to um, sway anyone else. I just need to think about it some more. But, but I could offer through the chair. Um, I mean, I've had the conversation with Chief Coleman um, and another member of the safety advisory team. We could certainly outreach those organizations that, that utilize our fields. I mean, we've got um, United Soccer. I mean, there are a number of ones that do and try to assess what they have in terms of equipment or not. Um, and also to determine, you know, do they already have people um, or an individual who could be designated at each site that would be trained in CPR and AED? So maybe we come back with you with, with more information. Um, typically during the summer, our schools really are not used the way they are during the school year in terms of, I mean, the fall mm -hmm. we very much, um, all of our facilities we back used widely, widely. Schools and grounds. I just, if, if we were going to do something like that, I would like to be accommodating to, uh, and, and again, we've had the conversation before where, where the, these are our schools, they're, um, they're to be, you know, upkept, and when we have to keep a close eye on, on, on our property, it's not, it doesn't belong to the townspeople, but at the same time, we already have that relationship, that partnership going where we do use the fields, we, we utilize them, we utilize them. All day long, in so, in some instances, on on a Sunday afternoon, we're at um, we're at Bryn Mawr all day. I just I just like to have the conversation to the point where we may be able to have just something set up there, even if it's something that um, the league purchases, but mounted um, mounted somewhere close to the fields that we're using, where we would have that access. And then the training piece, I don't think, mm -hmm. is a big deal. And I'm sure um, the fire department would help us out with, with that. But well, I, I think the way you're saying it, George, if if it is next to the fields where they can get at it, fine. But mm -hmm. if you have it in a school and people can't get to it, then I right. disagree with it. Yeah, that would. So be I think I think you're absolutely right. I think maybe we should have the superintendent go back and get a little more information for our next meeting, and then re bring this back up, and then we can make a vote. The, yeah, and the the other the other piece to that is I just want I want the. Um, the youth leagues. Um, my concern right now is is the the youth leagues, the, the people in our town, and not necessarily the other groups coming in, the AAU teams who are you know, maybe renting the gym or renting our fields. It's it's for the people who are already um, helping to support and pay for our facilities. Mm -hmm. So I just want to try to be as com accommodating 
as we can to them. So come up with a come up with some kind of a plan for them. As I said, the training won't be a big big piece of it. And I just want to I'd like to roll it out um, somewhat slowly so that you know next week or or, or at the start of the next season we you know we're not behind the eight ball and trying to get that training and trying to get those devices. If we were to buy the devices and mount them outside near the fields, could we possibly ask these groups for a donation or something to help curb the cost of these? I mean, I know up at Packachog when that incident happened, um, the equipment wasn't readily available right there. Right. So maybe it is to our benefit to have it mounted somewhere outside. Yeah, I'm not. I, I'm not saying that we that we need to. Um, fully support um, the enclosure that's going to hold the unit in. I'm sure the leagues would pitch in. They, um, they all charge fees, and um, I'm sure you know, they'd be willing to work on, on a committee that would help to get that done, and I would be willing to be a part of that as well. But yeah, if we could just gather up some more information in the, in the, in the next week or so, or, or before our next meeting, and have another discussion, and, and I'll I'll have a discussion with the youth groups that I'm a part of. Okay. Absolutely. One other Sorry. side note, though. I mean, there is potential vandalism that would go with something like that. So we That's the only thing, yeah. Take that into account. Yeah, it would have to be a pretty secure um, unit, for sure. It's just my, my concern if we don't have one at each mm -hmm. field like that is, as I said, there's so many teams coming and going. Well, did you leave me the unit? Did you yeah. did you pass it to the guy after you? Well, no, yeah. he was late. They skipped their practice. And, and um, if we're going to do it, we may as well make sure that everyone is fully covered and we roll this out um, correctly. So um, do I need a motion to push this off to the next meeting? We'll just... Yeah, I think just postpone it, just don't take a vote on it, we'll bring it up next meeting. Sounds great. Yep, sorry. Thank you. The next item, uh, based on the change that you just made um, with the Municipal Modernization Act, do you recommend that you approve the amendment to policy DK, payment procedures, which indicates that a member of this group can be consigned now? <clears throat> I would entertain that motion. Oh, we already did. I'm sorry. I make a motion to approve the update to DK payment procedures policy. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Let's vote. And then finally, under personnel to job descriptions, uh, we actually should have brought these to you a little bit sooner. Uh, these are individuals' positions in place this year ABC, ABA, board, board certified assistant behavior analyst, and the greatest. So it is our recommendation that you approve them as presented. I would entertain that motion. I'll make a motion to approve the job description for the BCABA as well as the job description for the Braillist. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 There's a vote. And do we need an executive session? Yes. We do. I would entertain a motion for executive session. I'll make a motion to <laughs> enter executive session per, per Mass General Law, Chapter 30, Section 21A2, to conduct strategies for negotiations with union and non-union personnel, and per Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to litigation. Do I have a second? Second. <clears throat> Any discussion? Oh, never mind that. Roll call vote. <laughs> Mrs. Harrington? Yes. Mrs. Carlton? Yes. 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 Good night, everyone.